times a day and when you listen to the Christians, they going to heaven and coming back from heaven and going back to heaven and then coming back from heaven. But it's really none of these things that are mentioned in the scripture. Now, as far as the Muslim brothers over here in America is concerned, they don't know what their deal is. All they know is they die and that's going to be the whole thing. So we can very well see that man has some things out here that's, that's, that's common among people, and people believe these things simply because it makes things so easy. I mean, anytime someone tells you, say, well, look, all you got to do is uh, have faith, and you're going to be saved. Well, you, that, that, you got to take that with a grain of salt, especially when you go back and read what Yahweh told our folks when he brought them uh, out, uh, out of the land of uh, uh, Egypt. And according to the Holy Prophets, uh, when we look around and see what's going on up on the earth, the, the time is now, and uh, this Holy Seminary is in place, Israel. Now, uh, uh, and we don't have uh, time to allow our flesh to hinder us in the things that, that we are about. Uh, that was our father's problem. Because of the spirit of Yahweh's holy word, we understand that the earth is at its rich end due to the rule of Lucifer's children. Mm -hmm. And through her treasure called nature, she is fighting back just as the saints are fighting in this kingdom today. Mm -hmm. And the things we read last Sabbath uh, uh, tells us that the worst is yet to come. Yes, sir. We read about the destruction of, of an entire continent and one third of mankind being killed. Uh, uh, we read of grievous uh, irritating sores upon men and men trying to die for five months. We read of the wind and the waves roaring and the sun becoming uh, seven times hotter as the slain of Yahweh's enemies are from one end of the earth to the other. Mm -hmm. However, just knowing these things will not get you saved, Israel. And we understand that it's going to be many righteous prayers and uh, countless hours of, of diligent service and much suffering and sacrificing on our, beh on our behalf to be found worthy to escape Yahweh Elohim's wrath and then the wrath of Yahshua, our God, King, High Priest, who will soon come to end Lucifer's rule on this earth. So let us consider these things because our time is at hand. We haven't got the time we had last year, and uh, every year I say these things, but as we began to see all of these disasters come up on earth, let us, let us be under, uh, understand one thing. This thing is not, uh, our salvation is not going to just require keeping up the law. When we do that, that's our duty. This thing is going to uh, uh, take a lot of sacrificing on our, our, our behalf and a lot of suffering on our behalf because Yahweh has to get us to the place to where we, we have to depend on him. See, now we don't depend on Yahweh. We call ourselves depending on ourselves, uh, on our education and our jobs and so forth and so on. Well, with all the people that just being displaced, and look at what's going on down in Louisiana. Uh, it's a lot of black people that they're dis displacing out of Louisiana, placing them all over this country. So we know that they're not going back. And uh, uh, what this is doing is this is putting the Gentiles in the position to where they can reclaim these cities and so forth and so on, so that when the destruction comes, they'll be destroyed mm. and, and instead of us. So let's not look at these things as something dire coming from the Most High God. These are a lot of things that happen is for our protection. We just can't see it that way simply because we got to have what NASA have. Mm. But, but Steve, we, and we do, we're going to die just like Massa. Uh, 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 Brother Steve, we the elders of the church and invite him who stands at the door that he may come in and sup with us and us with him, that we may continue to read out of this great legacy and consider what we read because children of Israel, our time truly is at hand. Yeah. So I'm going to read the articles of the church beginning at 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 to 11. But the end of all things is at hand. Be you therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things have fervent love among yourselves. For love shall cover the multitude of sin. Praise God. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man have received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of Elohim. Mm -hmm. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of Elohim. If any man minister, 
Let him do it as of the ability which Elohim gives, that Elohim in all things may be glorified through Yeshua the Mashiach, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearer, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of Elohim, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be you kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as Elohim, for the anointed one's sake, have forgiven you. Be you therefore followers of Elohim as their children, and walk in love, as the anointed one also have loved us, and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to Elohim for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication, sweet-smelling savor, I'm sorry, but fornication and all uncleanness, all covetousness, let it not be what's name among you as become a saint. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. <coughs> Revelations chapter 3, verses 20 through 22. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him, and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and I'm set down with my father in his throne. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Praise Yah. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church and holy convention. Uh, now let us go and read the battle plan and see just how the Lion of Yehuda will put an end to man's uh, madness. Uh, Revelation chapter 13 and verse 1 through verse 18. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 1 through verse 18. See, we don't have to surmise about these things. The only thing we have to do is read what is actually said and don't try to interpret it because if we try to interpret it, you end up with a lie in your mouth. Uh, man, uh, y'all, we left everything just like it's supposed to be. Uh, a lot of us may have different opinions and so forth about different things, but that's what it is, man's opinion. Uh, uh, Revelation chapter 13, and read verse 1 through verse 18, my brother. Let's go and read about what's going to be set up on the earth once the, uh, just before the Mashiach returns back to this earth. Verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Mm. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and Satan gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So we're talking about the, uh, he, he mentioned the four empires, which uh, when you look back at it, all of these were called the Babylonian Empire. Mm -hmm. uh, when, uh, when, when Nebuchadnezzar set up, it was called the Babylonian Empire. When the Medes and the Persians came in, they took over the Babylonian Empire. And when the Greeks came in, they took over the Babylonian Empire. Then the Romans took over the uh, Babylonian Empire. And Rome fell in 476 AD, and they uh, divided the earth among everybody but the children of, uh, of Yahweh I, Elohim. Why? Simply because they know that this is Lucifer's earth, and, that, and the nations serve Lucifer, and they know it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, brother. Revelation chapter 13, verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. Like I said, Rome fell in 476 AD, and here it is. They're putting it back together uh, as the EU uh, uh, is what they're calling it today. And uh, they already have the United Nations Army in place, which is a very elite army, whether y'all know it or not. Go ahead and read, brother. Um, as far as the Babylonian, um, the Babylonian Empire, um, they speak is that they 
it, just speaking of whatever nation is in power, right? The Babylonian uh, nation was always the most powerful nation. The Babylonian Empire is the nation that uh, uh, the control of the earth. The, the earth, the whole earth today is the Babylonian Empire. Mm -hmm. What they're bringing together is the revived Babylonian Empire. Uh, we know it as the Holy Roman Empire. It's had different names. They call it the, uh, the Medio Persian Empire. They call it the Greek Empire. And they call it the Roman Empire. But whoever took it over was still Babylon. So the whole earth today is called the, Bab the fragmented Babylonian Empire. So what they're trying to do is pull this whole thing back together again, but it's still called the Babylonian Empire. And what that means is the Babylon Empire, really. Because, and when you look upon the earth and see all the various doctrines and so forth that man has upon the earth, uh, uh, all the various religions, I should say, we can very well see, if we compare these things to the scripture, that that's just what it is, a bunch of babbling. Mm -hmm. Does that mean confusion? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you hear people talking, you say, man, the brother ain't doing my babbling. They're right, talking a whole lot of nonsense, right? Okay, go ahead and read Steve. Revelations chapter 13, verse 4. And they worship Satan, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Mm -hmm. And that was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Now the prophet Daniel uh, 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 warned us of these things, so did the Messiah in St. Matthew 24 chapter. Mm -hmm. well, go ahead and read, brother. Verse 6. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against Elohim to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. But let's understand this uh, one thing. Just because your name was written in, in this book does not mean that you have to remain in there. Mm -hmm. the Messiah said, whosoever sinned against me, uh, 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 like Yahweh said, whosoever uh, sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Mm -hmm. okay, so we have to be very, very careful because it leads with, the, with the understanding that you have, it's very easy to sin against your creator. Mm -hmm. A lot of us sin against the creator and don't even know it. Uh, uh, but all that's going to be made manifest very shortly. Go ahead and read it. That was pretty good. Um, that's why also when just said, when they said reading the book, that's like the scripture that says um, he has translated us into his glorious kingdom. Mm -hmm. And we know his kingdom of heaven is within. So it's like we're walking in that realm, right? Correct, correct. That's, and that's simply because your names are written in the book. If your name wasn't written in the book, couldn't be translated into that. But see, that's what he's doing now in teaching us the thing that he is teaching us, is translating us into his kingdom. Because understand, if you wait for the kingdom to be set up on this earth, then you're in big trouble. Because the kingdom is already within you. Go ahead and read it. Revelations chapter 13, verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Now, let's look at that. Now, let's examine that. Which of the nations on the earth didn't have a, a, a hand in, a, in, in slave trade? Mm. Hmm? Which of them? And Yahweh is going to recompense that back to him. Sure, it's caused us to suffer, but we, had, we, had, we must fulfill the book. The, the curses that was written against our people, we their children has got to carry out the, these curses. And right now, we're in the last three verses of the curses that was pronounced on our people uh, uh, in Deuteronomy 28, uh, 28 chapter. So understanding these things, let us know one thing. We think what we want to and believe what we want to, but this thing is going down and some dire things are going to happen to our people. I know a lot of us are pretty comfortable and so forth and so on. We feel that we got to handle on things for, for this year and next year. 
But all of that stuff is going to perish with the using them because if you're going to serve Yahweh, you can believe one thing. He's coming back to save the poor and the needy. And if you ain't poor and if you ain't needy, then ain't no sense you look for salvation. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, all last week, you know, we were talking about the Roman, the, the Babylonian, you know, but all last week on the History Channel, they've been letting us know who's coming back. They've been showing how the Romans did what they did in the past, pro, uh, you know, projected into the future on their buildings and their documents and everything else. So we can very well see that those Romans, you know, that empire is finna come back and be rebuilt. Well, brother, why do you think they've had on the History Channel all week long and on other channels wrong? Mm -hmm. The history of Rome. They've been showing us these things. See, one thing about these Gentiles, these Gentiles show you ahead of time what's going to take place. You see, they show you ahead of time what they plan on sitting up and so forth and so on, and how they plan on uh, 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 dealing with us. See, they plan on dealing with us the same way they dealt with us when they was had, had us uh, walk around talking about we were gladiators and dying in their arenas and so forth and so on, right? Well, the same thing is going to happen to our, our people again, like the Messiah said. It's going to come a time that whosoever killed you would think that he did y'all were a service. Uh, 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 go ahead and read, Steve. Revelations chapter 13, verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Now, this first empire, uh, in, in verse, uh, verse 2, we see that uh, uh, the dragon gave this empire his power and his seat and great authority. In other words, this is Lucifer's last uh, uh, big hoorah upon the earth, right? But verse, in verse 11 it says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. In other words, he was in control. This is the woman that's riding that beast, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead, brother. Verse 12. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Right, so that he is God sits in, uh, like, like, like the prophet said, that he is God sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Go ahead, brother. Verse 13. And he doeth great wonders, so that he make a fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceives them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Now, now look at this. Just, just take this as a scenario. Mm -hmm. Suppose the Pope would have stood up and commanded all of that water to come into Louisiana. Hmm. Okay? Right. They wouldn't be able to tell us that he's not God. That's right. Okay. Go ahead and read, brother. Hmm. Hmm. Revelations chapter 13, verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Mm -hmm. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark of the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Now, uh, uh, suppose we just don't receive the name, number, and mark, but we go on about following our own lifestyles the way that we want to, the way that we want to live. What's the difference? What's the difference? Uh, you don't have to uh, read that last verse there, uh, uh, my brother. Uh, now, from what we read here, Europe and Asia will worship the last Caesar and Lucifer through the influence of the Pope who uh, Lucifer gave his power unto, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's go into chapter 9 and read verse 1 through verse 12. Revelation chapter 9 and verse 1 through verse 12. Verse 1, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Mm -hmm. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Mm -hmm. 
And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. Mm -hmm. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of Elohim in their foreheads. Mm -hmm. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they, they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, Hold and up. death shall flee from them. Okay. Verse 5. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. Mm -hmm. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Mm -hmm. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. Mm -hmm. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. Mm -hmm. And they had breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. Mm -hmm. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails. And their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue have his name Apollyon. One woe is passed, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Okay, my brother, let's go and pick up the aftermath of this. Let's go into Daniel chapter 11 and verse 36 to verse 44. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 36 to verse 44. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the Elohim of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that that is determined shall be done. Mm -hmm. Neither shall he regard the god of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any god, for he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many, and shall divide the land for gain. Mm -hmm. And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push out. Now he's talking about the, the, the war against the Antichrist in the Middle East now. Go ahead, brother. And the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. He shall enter also into the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. Hmm. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver, and over all the precious things of Egypt. And the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be in his steps. Mm -hmm. But Titus out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. Okay, my brother. Now let's go back into Revelation chapter 16. We understand this to be the war between uh, uh, the Christians and, and, and the Muslims who are the Antichrist. Now let's go into Revelation chapter 16, and I want you to read verse 10, my brother. 
Revelation chapter 16 and verse 10. Verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. And blasphemed the Elohim of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. Okay, so we see that Europe and Asia will worship the last Caesar and Lucifer uh, uh, through the influence of the Pope, who Lucifer gave his power to, as I said before. And just as the Pope inspired America's destruction, so would he send Caesar's mighty army to conquer the, uh, the sons of Shem and Ham. And, uh, and as the war progresses, and the Muslims afflict either uh, either or nuclear and biological damage upon Rome, the sons of Lafayette will fiercely demolish the sons of uh, Shem and Ham and cause them to worship uh, Caesar uh, and Lucifer also. Now let's go into 2 Thessalonians uh, 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 chapter 1 and verse 1 through verse 12. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 1 through verse 12. one Saul and Silvanus and Timothy unto the church of the Thessalonians and Elohim our father and the Adonai Yahshua Hamashiach grace unto you and peace from Elohim our father and the Adonai Yahshua Hamashiach we are bound to thank Elohim always for you brethren as it is meet because that your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you all toward each other abounds, mm -hmm. so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of Elohim for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of Elohim that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of Elohim for which you also suffer. Mm -hmm. Seeing it is a righteous thing with Elohim to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you and to you who are trouble rest with us when the Adonai Yahshua shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not Elohim and that obey not the gospel of our Adonai Yahshua Hamashiach who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Adonai and from the glory of his power. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day, wherefore also we pray always for you that our Elohim would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodliness and the work of faith with power, that the name of our Adonai, Yahshua HaMashiach, may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our Elohim, and the Adonai, Yahshua HaMashiach. Read up to uh, chapter 2 and verse 12, brother. I'm sorry. Chapter 2 and verse 12. <laughs> verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Adonai, Yahshua HaMashiach, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of the Mashiach is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a following away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, mm -hmm. who opposes and exalt himself above all that is called Elohim, all that is worship, so that he is Elohim, sitteth in the temple of Elohim, showing himself that he is Elohim. Mm -hmm. Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. So it's the Holy Ghost that's holding back these things so to give us an opportunity to get ourselves together because Yahweh's word has to be fulfilled. And if we don't do it, believe one thing, Yahweh is able to use stones to raise up children to Abraham. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, uh, so don't think we so high and mighty just because we know the truth. We got a great job to be done, and y'all want to know the truth, we falling down on the job. Go ahead and, uh, 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 and what it all has to do with, all it has to do with is natural things. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 7. For the mystery of, in of iniquity does already work. Only he who now lets will let until he be taken out of the way. The mystery of iniquity is already at work, not only on the earth bringing the things together about this beast, but it's to work at us who haven't made up our mind whether we're going to serve Yahweh the way uh, we're supposed to or whether we're going to show him, uh, serve him rather the way that we want to. And that's what most of us do. We serve him the way we feel like serving. Uh, go ahead and read. And uh, to come back to what you were saying at the beginning of the class about Babylon, you cannot serve Yah and Mama, right? You can't, brother. And Mama is the world system of things, right? Correct, yeah. correct. And if we get caught up in this world system of things uh, the way that most of us already are today, then truly we're going to die in this God-forsaken place. But go ahead and read, brother. Verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Adam shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Mm -hmm. And for this cause, Elohim shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You see what it said? That they might all be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. It's one thing to believe that Yahweh is the, uh, Elohim is the creator of all things, and that Yahshua is his son, and that we are his uh, uh, people. But it's all together. Another thing, to not live in our pleasures uh, uh, as we try to seek the salvation. You cannot serve Yahweh uh, uh, and mammon. It will not work. Now, let's go back into Daniel. Uh, we saw, here we see that the Pope has moved to Jerusalem, and he's sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's go back in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 11, and read verse 45 through chapter 12 and verse 3, my brother. Daniel chapter 11 and, uh, 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 and verse uh, 45 through chapter 12 and verse 3. So, Elder, before you go, uh, that being the Pope then, he was the physical manifestation of a spiritual demon, right? Pardon me? The Pope then, he was the physical manifestation of that spiritual demon Satan. Right? Of course, of course. Brother, he's going to be in the temple with the demon. <laughs> Uh, uh, Daniel 11, and brother picked that up at Daniel 11 and verse uh, uh, 45. Yes, sir. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet shall he come to his end, and none shall help him. Mm -hmm. And at that time shall Mikael stand up, the great prince which stand for the children of thy people. And that shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. Mm -hmm. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Okay, my brother. Now let's go back into Revelation chapter 11 and read verse 1 through verse 14. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 1 through verse 14. Verse 1, And thou was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of Elohim, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not. For it is given unto the Euro Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty in two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. 
These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the Elohim of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceed out of their mouth and devour their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shed heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them and kill them. So Caesar's going to kill them off, right? Go ahead, brother. Yes, sir, verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Adonai was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Mm. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Mm -hmm. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from Elohim entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Now some of the Christians are going to tell you all that this is when, uh, when, they, when they say come up hither, that that's when a lot of Christians are going to go. So they got two or three different doctrines as to when they're going up to heaven. But this is only talking to two people. Mm -hmm. Just two people. The two angels that was killed and, and, uh, 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 and raised back up, these are the ones that's going to ascend. Uh, uh, but go ahead and read, brother. Revelations chapter 11, verse 13. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain a mere seven thousand, and the remnant were frightened, and gave glory to the Elohim of heaven. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe comes quickly. Now, seeing that Caesar now rules the whole earth, the temple will be completed. Then the, abom the abominable desolator will stand in the holy place and claim to be Yahweh Elohim in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Now, pick that up at verse 15, Revelations 11, and uh, verse 15 to verse 19, my brother. Yes, sir. Verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Adonai and of his anointed one, and he shall reign forever and ever. Mm. And the four and twenty elders which sat before Israel on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped Yahweh, saying, We give thee thanks, O Adonai Elohim Almighty, which are and was and are to come, because you have taken to you your great power and have reigned. And the nations were angry, and your wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that you should give reward unto your servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear your name, small and great, and should destroy them which destroy the earth. Praise you And the temple of Israel was opened in heaven, and that was seen in his temple, the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. Okay, my brother, chapter 16 and verse 17 to verse 21. All this taking place in three and a half years, brother. It was, a, it was a, the covenant was confirmed. If you read uh, 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 the book of Daniel, uh, the covenant was confirmed uh, uh, for one year. I mean, for seven years. Okay, it, in the beginning, it was uh, 70 weeks. So the Messiah came in 69 weeks. He taught one half week, 
Uh, it said he was going to confirm the covenant with many for one week. So he taught with for one half week, right? And the last half week to make up the 70 weeks of Daniel will be the three and a half years of the beast and the three and a half years of the uh, uh, of the false prophet. A lot of folks talk about, well, all this is going to have three and a half years of one and three and a half years of another. No, you won't. All of this is going down at the same time. The beast and the false prophet is coming up because if it's the false prophet, it told us that uh, they worship the dragon. Right? And it told us who it was that caused him to wish the dragon and receive that mark. So all that's going to be taking place at the same time. Okay, uh, where are you at, Steve? Revelations chapter 16, verses 17 through 21. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, it is done. Mm. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake such as was not since men was upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great. Mm -hmm. And the city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before Elohim to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Mm -hmm. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. Mm -hmm. And there fell upon men a great hell out of heaven, every stone about the weight of 120 pounds, and men blasphemed Elohim because of the plague of the hell, but the plague that all oh, was exceeding great. Okay, so once the Pope uh, got in that temple and said he uh, uh, he was God, we see that the uh, 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 the seventh vial was to, uh, was poured out up in the air, and it was so great an earthquake that all the cities of the earth fell. All the mountains were thrown down, right? And, and the wrath of Yahweh that was coming uh, 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 upon this earth. Now let's go back to Zechariah 12 and read verse 4. Uh, what the heck is that? Yeah, Zechariah 12, and pick that up at verse 4, my brother. Yeah, Ellie, before you go on, you know, as we read back there in Revelation 11, I was watching the History Channel, and this read of the Constantine, they read that part where the kingdom of heaven become ours, right? So they took that, you know, literally just as the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. see, as we read the prophecy, you know, you know going to the temple of God, so it's really coming to you, right? Yeah, correct, brother. Uh, Zechariah 12, and I'll tell you what you do, uh, uh, yeah, pick that up at verse uh, verse 4 through verse 6, brother. Yes, sir. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 4. And that day, says Yahweh, I will smite every horse with astonishment and his rider with madness. And I will open my eyes upon the house of Yehuda and will smite every horse of the people with blindness. Mm -hmm. And the governors of Yehuda shall say in their heart, The inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in Yahweh of hosts, their Elohim. In that day will I make the governors of Yehuda like a herd of fire among the wood, and like a torture fire in a sheath. And they shall devour all the people round about, on the right hand and on the left. And Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Yerushim. Okay, so now what we see is that Nikaya stood up. The Elohim of Israel says the time of Lucifer's rule is finished. And now Yehuda takes the city of Zion and the bait is in Yahshua's trap and the false prophet cannot escape the city. Once Caesar hears this, the empire will gather themselves and march on Zion to destroy our people. But let's go and see what's going to take place at that time. Numbers chapter 10, and I want you to read verse 9, my brother. Yeah, verse 6, verse 6 is covering uh, when we first went into the land back in uh, Exodus and Deuteronomy, right? When we was supposed to have wiped everybody out and not make no lead with those people, right? Well, we, we are never supposed to uh, make league with other people. That's what gets get us uh, in our trouble anyways. He told us in the beginning, don't make no uh, covenants with the people. And, uh, and right now, brother, we owe our store, soul to the co company store because we, we disobeyed that and made covenants with the people. Uh, uh, Numbers chapter 10, and pick that up, my brother, at, I want you to read one verse out of there, verse 9. Verse 9, and if you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you, then you shall blow Hold up, brother. Hold up. 
and start that over again for me. Numbers chapter 10, verse 9. And if you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you, then you shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and you shall be remembered before Yahweh your Elohim, and you shall be saved from your enemies. Okay, my brother. Now let's go into uh, let's go into uh, 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 Psalms chapter ninety-one and read verse one through verse sixteen. Psalms chapter ninety-one and verse one through verse sixteen. Now let's understand what has happened. Now the word has went out that uh, uh, Judah is in that city and that Judah has, sec has secured this city. And the word has went out and all the armies on the earth uh, are getting themselves together to come up to Jerusalem, right? Okay, go ahead, my brother. Psalms chapter 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. I will say of Yahweh, he is my refuge and my fortress, my Elohim, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckle. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made Yahweh, which is my refuge, even the Most High, your habitation, there shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, Leash you dash your foot against the stone. I guess so. We didn't got out in the wilderness and ain't nobody got nothing. But what we can pick up out there in the wilderness, right? Now we've lost all of these natural things that that that, uh, that we've accomplished. Now being in a position to where we uh, 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 have to depend on Yahweh, that's what we're gonna have to do. Depend on Him, and we're gonna. Uh, uh, it's gonna be very easy for us uh, uh, to grab onto Him once He get all these natural things out of our face. Mm -hmm. But go ahead and read, brother. Psalms chapter ninety-one. Verse 13, thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall you trample on the feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. Mm -hmm. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Okay, my brother. Now remember now, Mikael had already stood up and he's commanding the army that, 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 that's in heaven to come to the earth. Now, let's go into Joel chapter 2 and verse 1 through chapter 3 and verse 16. Joel chapter 2 and verse 1 through chapter 3 and verse 16. Yahweh has already gave, uh, put his, uh, given his angels charge over us to keep us in the way. And the only way that we are going to fall is that we break God's law and not do the things that we are supposed to do. And then we 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 pretty good at that. Uh, uh, Joel chapter two and verse one through chapter three and verse sixteen. Verse one: Blow you the trumpet in Yehuda, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahweh comes, for it is near at hand. Mm -hmm. A day of darkness mm -hmm. and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness as the morning is spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong, they have not been ever the like, neither shall there be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Mm -hmm. A fire devoured before them, and behind them a flame burns. The, the land is as the garden of Edom before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yes, and nothing shall escape them. 
The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that divides the stubble, as a strong people set in battle or rape. Before their face the people shall be much pain, all faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Mm -hmm. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. In other words, they, if they get attacked and lose a lot of men, they're not going to be, be phased by that. They're going to have so many men. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 9. They shall run to and fro in the city. In other words, they're going to invade the city, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And Yahweh shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For he is strong that execute his word. For the day of Yahweh is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Mm -hmm. Therefore also now says Yahweh, Turn you even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto Yahweh your Elohim. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repents him of the evil. Who knows if he will return and repent, and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto Yahweh your Elohim. Blow the trumpet in Yehuda, sanctify fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast, let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of Yahweh, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare your people, O Yahweh, and give not your heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Why should they say among the people, Where is their Elohim? Uh, uh, chapter 3 and verse 1, brother. Verse 1. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Yehuda and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations, and will bring them down into the battle of Jehoshaphat, and will plead with them there for my people, and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations, and parted my land. Mm -hmm. And they have cast lots for my people, and given a bar for an harlot, and sold a girl for wine, that they might drink. Mm -hmm. Yea, and what have you to do with me, O Tyree, and Sidon, and all the coast of Philistia? Will you render me a recompense? And if you recompense me, swiftly and speedily will I return your recompense upon your own head. Mm. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. The children also of Yehuda and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Greeks that you might remove them far from their border. Mm. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither you have sold them, and will return your recompense upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Yehuda, and they shall sell them to the Sabaeans, to a people far off, but Yahweh have spoken it. Mm -hmm. Proclaim you this among the Euro Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all you heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Yahweh. Hmm. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. But there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put you in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full, the vats overflow. 
for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of Yahweh is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Yahweh also shall roar out of Yehuda and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But Yahweh will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Right. The priests, the ministers of, of, of Yahweh gathered themselves together and said, Save your people, O Yahweh, so why should the heathen bear rule over us again? Right? Revelation chapter 19 and verse 1 through verse 19. Mm. Now remember, Micaiah has already stood up, and he's put a huge defense that stands up for the children of Israel. Micaiah has already stood up, and uh, he's gathering together the armies of, uh, 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 of the living God. Now pick that up in Revelation chapter 19, and pick that up in verse 1, my brother. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and honor and power until the Adonai, our Elohim. Now remember, John is in heaven, so he said he heard these things in heaven. He didn't. He didn't necessarily mean that they, these people were in heaven. This is what he heard when he was in heaven. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, me, brother. Verse two: For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and have avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Mm -hmm. And again they said, Hallelujah! And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped Israel that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah! Mm. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our Elohim, all you his servants, and you that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Adonai Elohim omnipotent reign. Mm -hmm. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife have made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Mm -hmm. And he says unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he says unto me, These are the true sayings of Elohim. Mm -hmm. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, Don't you do it, I am your fellow servant. And of your brethren that have the testimony of Yahshua, worship Yah. For the testimony of Yahshua is the spirit of prophecy. Mm -hmm. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his, heads, on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Mm -hmm. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of Elohim. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty Elohim. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Adonai of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great Elohim, mm -hmm. that you may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beasts, and the kings of the earth, and their armies, 
gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Okay, so the beast and everything is coming up. Heaven is already open, right? The army is coming out of heaven. Uh, uh, am I correct? And now he's, uh, 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 he's the beast. He's gathering himself together to make war against uh, uh, the Messiah that's coming out of heaven. Now read uh, Psalms chapter 50 and verse 1 through verse 6. And let's see what's going to precede uh, 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 the Messiah uh, in return. Uh, uh, Psalms chapter 50 and verse 1 through verse 6. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, the first time the sun became dark, uh, the sun became dark because of the uh, the smoke from the pit. But once the Messiah got together to come to the earth, brother, the sun went down. Uh, the moon refused to give her light, and the stars withdrew. The whole universe was dark. Mm. Okay. Okay, this is why I told you they're going to be groping around in the darkness and so forth, right? And then uh, when, the, when, it gets, when the heavens roll back and they look up, they're going to be in big trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Psalms chapter 50, and ver pick that up verse 1 through verse 6. Let's see, uh, see what's going to take place. Uh, and what's going to proceed the Messiah's coming. Verse 1. The mighty Elohim, even Yahweh, have spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun until the going down thereof. Mm -hmm. Out of Yehuda, the perfection of beauty, Elohim have shined. Our Elohim shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about. So we're going to have fire going before, uh, before him, right? And all the holy angels coming down out of heaven, right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 4. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth, that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, and the heaven shall declare his righteousness, for Yah is judge himself. Now you have to ask yourself a question. Uh, uh, it said in verse... <laughs> it said in verse 5, Gather my saints together unto me. Gather my... Uh, 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 where's Tavra? Tavra, come get your baby. <laughs> Don't let her wander around in here. Uh, Y'all excuse me, y'all. Uh, Oh, yeah, uh, and say it in our uh, thanks there, brother. In uh, chapter 15, verse 5, it said, Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Right? Salvation without sacrifice is not known in Scripture. Well, what's your covenant? Hmm? What is your covenant? Hmm? Uh... Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, brother, let's go into Psalms chapter 96 and verse 1 through chapter 97 and verse 10. So we saw, we see the Messiah coming and, and, and fire going forth before the whole heavens is on fire, right? And all the angels and everything is coming out and all those folks that haven't made a covenant with Yahweh by sacrifice, they're going to die. Ain't no doubt about it. Uh, uh, chapter uh, 96 and pick that up at verse 1, my brother. Yes, sir. Think, sorry, brother. I think that same covenant you speak about, isn't that same in Isaiah when he said those that make your covenant with death should be dishonored about the when the overflowing flood came? Mm-hmm. You mm -hmm. should sweep you away, brother. Yeah. Right, see. The, 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 my question has always been, what's your sacrifice to Yahweh? We always talk, we always come to church and, and do it, we, you know, we come to church and we put a few dollars in church and so forth and so on and we think we got it made. There ain't no covenant, that's law. That's law. So what are we doing that's above and beyond the law? If we don't go beyond the law, then we're going to be just like our fathers. Well, we know it. We know it. So why do we let the natural things of today keep us from doing the things that we know that we got to do? There are no sacrifices being made. Folks is doing what they want to do, and that's it, keeping the law. Yeah, that's why our fathers died. Uh, uh, Psalms 91 and uh, uh, 96, brother, and read verse 1 through 97 and 10. Uh, 
Yes, sir. Verse 1. Oh, sing unto Yahweh a new song. Sing unto Yahweh all the earth. Sing a new song. Now, that old song y'all been singing ain't good enough. Go ahead, brother. Verse 2. Sing unto Yahweh, bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Hmm. Declare Yahweh's glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For Yahweh is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. Mm. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but Yahweh made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto Yahweh, O you kindreds of the people. Give unto Yahweh glory and strength. Hmm. Give unto Yahweh the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. All worship Yahweh in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Mm -hmm. Say among the heathen that Yahweh reigns. The world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. It says, Give unto Yahweh the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his court. Y'all know our offerings is getting pretty sloppy. <laughs> Every two or three months, I have to get up and tell folks, look, we're getting behind and stuff, and we need to catch up. We're getting behind and stuff, and we need to catch up. We do all right that week. The next week, we do all right. Then the next two or three months, we come in, and folks making good money and put $5 in church. Mm. See? Folks put five dollars. Folks come to church and say, "Well, I'm gonna give of uh, uh, I'm gonna, I, I'm not gonna do no sacrifice, and I'm just gonna give an offering." Right? Where are the sacrifices? How do we expect to maintain a place if we don't sacrifice? We ain't got a business set up to where we can have an income coming into the church because the niggas too lazy to get out and try to do something. Everybody get off and work, they're gonna go home and 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 deal with what they got to deal with at home, but we ain't got time for that garbage. Uh, 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 and we mess around and lose this place here, we're going to be in big trouble. Watch. This is the only place y'all can go where y'all can hear the truth and be up on what's happening. You know what? We treat it like it. We treat this place here just like we do one of them broke down cars out there. As a matter of fact, most of us spend more money on our cars than we put in church. And then every two or three months, David got to come in there, man, look at we behind in this and we behind in that, and uh, we ain't going to be able to catch up this man with this. We're going to have to do something else. Uh, uh, and that don't make no damn sense. But go ahead and uh, 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 read, brother. Yes, but sir. the hair go with the high. Yeah. Go on and read, brother. Psalms, chapter 96, verse 11. Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad, let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful in all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice before Yahweh. For he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Mm -hmm. Yahweh reigneth. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of owls be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies round about. His lightnings enlighten the world, the earth saw and trembled. Mm. The hills melted like wax at the presence of Yahweh, at the presence of Yahweh of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. Mm -hmm. Confounded be all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves of idols. Worship Yahweh, all you gods. Zion heard and was glad, and the daughters of Yehuda rejoiced because of your judgments, O Yahweh. For you, Yahweh, are high above all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. You that love Yahweh hate evil. He preserves the souls of his saints. He delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. Okay, let's deal with this written with some of these lips. Now we see the Messiah is our heaven is open. And the Messiah is on his way to the earth, right? Okay, first Corinthians fifteen and verse fifty one through verse fifty seven. <coughs> Y'all excuse me. First Corinthians fifteen in verse 51 through verse 57.
verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be, ra shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Hmm. But thanks be to Yah, which gives us the victory through our Adonai, Yahshua HaMashiach. Okay, so Messiah start coming. Verse 1, Behold, the day of Yahweh cometh, and your spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifle, and the women ravished. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Adonai go forth, and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Mm -hmm. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, mm -hmm. which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. And you shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Yea, you shall flee like as you fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Yehuda, and the Adonai, and Yahweh my Elohim shall come, and all the saints with you. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark. But it shall be one day which shall be known to Yahweh, nor day nor night. But it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. Right, so they're going to invade the city, think they got you baptized. They're going to invade the city, and once they invade the city, the heaven is going to open up, the Messiah is going to show up on the scene, the Messiah is going to come and stand on the Mount of Olives, and once the Mount, he stands on the Mount of Olives, people are in big trouble. Everybody on the earth then is going to be in big trouble. If you ain't got it then, it's too late to get it. Uh, 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 let's go and engage this war here. Uh, Ezekiel 39 and read verse 1 through verse 6, my mm -hmm. brother. Ezekiel chapter 39 and verse 1 through verse 6. Let's engage this war. See, we can believe that, 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 that Yahweh has been driving all these years. Uh, look, at, look upon the earth today. Look, upon, look at our current condition and so forth and so on. Look at the thing that's coming upon us. And you can very well see. Yahweh meant everything you said. Now we can believe what we want to be and we can do what we want to do. But Yahweh is going to take care of his business. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 39 and read verse 1 through verse 6, my brother. Yes, sir. Verse 1. And the word of Yahweh. I'm sorry, I'm at 38. I'm sorry. Verse 1, Therefore, thou son of man, prophesy against God, and say, Thus says the Adonai Elohim, Behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Moscow and to boss. And I will turn thee back, and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts, and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. Mm. And I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand, and will cause thine arrows to fall out of thy right hand. Mm -hmm. 
Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, you and all your bands, and the people that is with you. I will give you unto the ravenous birds of every sort, and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. Mm -hmm. You shall fall upon the open field, for I have spoken it, says the Adonai Elohim. And I will send a fire on the land of Russia, and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles, and they shall know that I am the most high. Okay, my brother, let's go and see some other nations that's going to be gathered with them. Let's go into Psalms chapter 83 and pick that up at verse 1. See, all the nations on the earth is going to be against us, just like all the nations on the earth against us today. We see what's happening. We just, we just had a good example of what's going on. Look now, we know that Louisiana, uh, 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 New Orleans, we know that it was 80% black, right? Mm -hmm. They scattered those folks all over this country, right? Do you think they're going to let them come back down there? Okay. Yes, sir. Now they become what? Now they becoming a burden to the people that they're among, right? right and right. folks looking at us, talking about, well, why ain't y'all doing anything? We trying to do something, but you got FEMA and the American Red Cross that's keeping us from doing anything. Now what's that showing the nation? That's showing the nation that we don't give a damn. Uh -huh. uh, uh, Psalms 83, and pick that up at verse 1, my brother. Yeah, yeah, they, they went down there with, with, with uh, the armored cars and the guns instead of food and water, what those folks really needed when they went down there. They were worried about stopping riding instead of really helping them folks. Yeah, well, that's part of war, brother. That's part of our war. Uh, uh, see, y'all don't think we at war with the nation, but we are. We so busy, we so busy trying to hold on to our own stuff and so forth that we don't see the nation that loose was at war with us like a big dog, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and he's keeping us turned against each other. Mm -hmm. You see, he's keeping our minds stayed on. Well, I need this, so I'm gonna go buy this. I need this, so I'm gonna go buy that. Y'all know we just had to pay a sixteen hundred dollar electric bill. Yeah, you know, the niggas worried about new tires. Uh, uh, go on and read, man. Yeah, and I can see where you're coming from with that. When they throw us about thirty-five or 40,000 of those people in one of these cities, it's going to cause some big trouble. Of course it one is. One of these cities, man, in a bad economy already. Well, look what's going to happen right here in Atlanta with all the people they brought in Atlanta. Man, ain't no jobs here now. They got 15 here right now, and they're projecting to bring 35,000 more here. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to be in big trouble. Y'all think we're in trouble. Y'all think, think everything hunky-dory. Just wait. Just wait. Yahweh is taking care of his business. We can play these little stupid games we play. Every man can, can be on all his own island as, as he wants to. But like I keep asking, where's your sacrifice? If we do that, that just the law, then what we got to say? We've done that which was our duty, right? Our fathers did their duty, and look at us. Uh, Psalms chapter 83, and pick that up in verse 1, brother. Yes, sir. Keep not your solemns. O Elohim, hold not your peace, and be not still, O Elohim. For lo, your enemies make a tumult, and they that hate you have lifted up the head. Mm. They have taken crafty counsel against your people, and consulted against your hidden ones. Mm -hmm. They have said, come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Mm. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against you. Mm. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarim. So we see Edom, we see Ishmael, right? We know Moab and Ammon is already in our land, right? And the Hagarim, those are uh, 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 Hagar's descendants, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Verse 7. Jebal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. Ashur also is John with you. Ashur is, is Shem, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. They have helped the children of Lot. Who? Hmm. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sisera, as to Jabin, at the brook of Kaisan, which perished at Endor, they became as dung for the earth. Make them nobles like Oreb and like Z, yea, all the princes as Zebar and as Zamana, who said, Let us take to ourselves the houses of Elohim in possession. Hmm. Oh, my Elohim, make them like a wheel, as the stubble before the wind, 
as the fire burns the wood, and as the flame sets the mountains on fire, so persecute them with your tempest, and make them afraid with your storm. Mm -hmm. Fear their faces with shame, that they may seek your name, O Yahweh. Mm. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yea, let them be put to shame and perish, that men may know that you, whose name alone is Yahweh, Ah, the most high over all the earth. Okay, amen and amen. So we see, O oh, children of Israel, that this thing isn't just, ain't going to be no nations out there that's going to be saying, oh, yeah, we don't help y'all. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. We don't help ourselves. We don't deserve no help. Uh, Yahweh has given us a long time to get our act together. And if we don't do it, we're supposed to die. Mm -hmm. Ain't no doubt about it. Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 20 through verse uh, uh, 23. So we see all the nations gathered together. The Messiah is on his way, right? He's, okay, he's, he's already stood on the Mount of Olives, right? Okay, go ahead and uh, pick up Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 20 through verse 23. Verse 20, thus says Yahweh of hosts, it shall yet come to pass that there shall come people and the inhabitants of many cities. And the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, let us go speedily to pray before Yahweh and to seek Yahweh of hosts. Mm -hmm. I will go also. Yea, many people and strong nations shall come to seek Yahweh of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before Yahweh. Thus says Yahweh of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all language, languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you. But we have heard that Yah is with you. Okay, my brother, let's, uh, uh, let's go and uh, bring that about. Now, what we've seen so far is that Lucifer and his children approached Israel's holy city, and like I said, they, they fell into Yahweh's, uh, Yahshua's rather, well-planned trap. And the sun uh, went down in the middle of the day, and all the universe became dark as the beast invaded Zion. But... As we, as our people cried unto Yahweh Elohim for help, the heavens will open, our God King will lead the charge, and the dead, then those uh, chained, will meet him, uh, 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 him becoming uh, the rest of his army. So we went in Psalms 96 and read what was going to take place. Now let's go back and pick this up in Revelation chapter 19 and verse uh, 19 through uh, chapter 20 and verse 3. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 19 through chapter 20 and verse 3. Revelation chapter 19, verse 19. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against them that sat on the horse and against his army. Mm -hmm. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worship his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant was slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Mm -hmm. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose a little season. Okay, my brother. So we see what, what took place there, that uh, the Messiah suddenly came into his temple, and he took his throne, right? Mm -hmm. And Lucifer was thrown into his prison, and his angels was cast into the outer void for a thousand years. But let's go ahead and deal with the rest of this war here. Ezekiel chapter 37, and, uh, 39 rather, and verse uh, 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 7 through verse 29. Ezekiel chapter 39 and verse 7 through verse 29.
Verse 7. So will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore, and the heathen shall know that I am Yahweh, the Holy One in Israel. Mm -hmm. Behold, it is come, and it is done, says the Adonai Elohim. This is the day whereof I have spoken. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows, and the hand staves and the spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years, so that they shall take no wood out of the field, neither cut down any out of the forest, for they shall burn the weapons with fire, and they shall spoil those that spoil them, and rob those that rob them, says the Adonai Elohim. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will give unto God a place that of graves in Israel, the valley of the passengers on the east of the sea, and it shall stop the noses of the passengers, and there shall they bury Gog and all his multitude, and they shall call it the valley of Haman God. Mm -hmm. And seven months shall the house of Israel be buried of them, that they may cleanse the land. Mm -hmm. Yea, all the people of the land shall bury them, and it shall be to them a renown the day that I shall be glorified, says the Adonai Elohim. And they shall sever out men of continual employment, passing through the land to bury with the passengers those that remain upon the face of the earth to cleanse it. After the end of seven months shall they search. And the passengers that pass through the land, when any sees a man's bone, then shall he set up a sign by it to the barriers have buried it in the valley of Haman God. And also the name of the city shall be Hamona. Thus shall they cleanse the land. And you, son of man, thus says the Adonai Elohim, speak unto every feathered fowl and to every beast of the field, assemble yourselves and come. Gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice that I do sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel, that you may eat flesh and drink blood. You shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, and of goats, of bullocks, all of them fatlings of Bashan. And you shall eat fat till you be full, and drink blood till you be drunken of my sacrifice, which I have sacrificed for you. Mm -hmm. Thus you shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots, with mighty men and with all men of war, says the Adonai Elohim. And I will set my glory among the heathen, and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed, and my hand that I have laid upon them. So the house of Israel shall know that I am Yahweh their Elohim from that day and forward. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. Because they transgressed against me, therefore hid I my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies, so fell they all by the sword. According to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions have I done unto them, and hid my face from them. Therefore thus says the Adonai Elohim, Now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob, and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel, and will be jealous for my holy name, after that they have borne their shame, and all their trespasses, whereby they have trespassed against me, when they dwell safely in their land, and none made them afraid. When I have brought them again from the people and gathered them out of their enemies' lands and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations, then shall they know that I am Yahweh their Elohim, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen, but I have gathered them unto their own land and have left none of them any more there. Neither will I hide my face any more from them, for I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel says the Adonai Elohim. Uh, uh, Isaiah 66 and verse 18 through verse 24. Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 18 through verse 24. 
verse 18. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. Praise God. And I will set a sign among them, and I will send those that escape of them unto the nations, to Tarshish, Pud, and Lud, that draw the boat to Tubal and Jabin, to the Isles of Fall, that have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Euro Gentiles. Now let's understand one thing. When the scripture says every eye shall see from the Messiah's return, every eye that's in that Middle East over there. The surround Jerusalem is going to see. But the other, other people is going to see is that, that uh, the cities are destroyed, the mountains and so forth are, are destroyed, uh, the wind is going to be uh, uh, ranting and raving up on the sea and everything. And a lot of people are, uh, are not going to know what's going on. So what he's going to do is once this king he steps up this kingdom, he's going to take Judah and send Judah to the four corners of the earth to let the folks know what, what went down. But go ahead and read, brother. He says, chapter 66, verse 20. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto Yahweh out of all nations upon horses and in chariots and in leiters and upon mules and upon swift beasts to my holy mountain, Jerusalem, says Yahweh, as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of Yahweh. And I will also take up them for priests and for Levites, says Yahweh. Mm -hmm. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, says Yahweh, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Shabbat to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, says Yahweh. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me, for their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorrent unto all people. Amen and praise Yah. Now let's go in and see what caused the nations to uh, bring uh, Israel uh, uh, up to uh, the land. Uh, Leviticus chapter 25 in verse 1 through verse 34. Leviticus chapter 25 in verse 1 through verse 34. Verse 1, And Yahweh spake unto Moshe in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When you come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath. Means when you come into this land, now this land is going to keep a Sabbath, right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 3, Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for Yahweh. Mm -hmm. You shall neither sow your field, nor prune your vineyard. That which grows of its own accord of your harvest, you shall not reap, neither gather the grapes of your vine undressed. For it is a year of rest unto the land. Mm -hmm. And the Sabbath of the land shall be meat for you, for you and for your servant and for your maid and for your hired servant and for your stranger that sojourns with you and for your cattle and for the beasts that are in your land shall all the increase thereof be me. And you shall number seven Sabbaths of years unto you seven times seven years. And the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto you forty-nine years. Then shall you cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall you make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. So we understand that it is going to be on the uh, 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 on the tenth uh, on the uh, on the tenth day of the seventh month, which is the day of atonement, right? That the Messiah is going to blow the trumpet of the jubilee, and then this is when all the nations are going to start bringing Israel back up to the land uh, to take your people, so we can have some peace and, and tranquility in our land. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 10. 
and you shall hallow the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and you shall return every man unto his possession, and you shall return every man unto his family. Now we know when our fathers stopped keeping the feast of jubilee, then we know which day to, uh, we know just about the day that the Messiah is going to show up on the scene. Go ahead and read it, brother. Verse 11. A jubilee shall that fiftieth year be unto you. You shall not sow, neither reap that which grows of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it of your vine under it. Ah, uh, you young brothers that like to do all this research on mysteries, ain't no sense in you going in there trying to find out when our father stop and you ain't gonna do them a waste of time, okay? Stop looking for any mysteries. The only mysteries you're gonna get, you're gonna hear right here. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 12. For it is the jubilee, it shall be holy unto you, you shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. In the year of this jubilee, you shall return every man unto his possession. Mm -hmm. And if you sell all Verse 17, bro. You shall not therefore oppress one another, but you shall fear your Elohim, for I am Yahweh your Elohim. Wherefore, you shall do my statutes and keep my judgments and do them, and you shall dwell in the land in safety. And the land shall yield her fruit, and you shall eat your field, and dwell therein in safety. And if you shall say, What shall we eat the seventh year? Behold, we shall not sow, nor gather in our increase. Hmm. Then I will command my blessing upon you in the sixth year, and it shall bring forth fruit for three years. Hmm. And you shall sow the eighth year and eat yet of old fruit until the ninth year. Until her fruits come in, you shall eat of the old store. The land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine. For you are strangers and sojourners with me. And in all the land of your possession, you shall grant a redemption for the land. If your brother be waxen poor, and have sold away some of his possession, and if any of his kin come to redeem it, then shall he redeem that which his brother sold. And if the man have none to redeem it, and himself be able to redeem it, then let him count the years of the sale thereof, and restore the overplus unto the man to whom he sold it, that he may return unto his possession. But if he be not able to restore it to him, then that which is sold shall remain in the hand of him that have brought it unto the year of Jubilee. And in the Jubilee it shall go out, and he shall return unto his possession. You know, hell, I was thinking about something. Now, we got the laws of Yahweh, but over here, the only time you relieved of anything is when you die. Of course. I mean, you don't have no taxes, no bills, no nothing. You be relieved, and then the family have to yeah. clean up. Uh, yeah. Like the temptation said, uh, 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 that uh, uh, what they said about that, that his papa was rolling his stone. Yeah. But what he did when he died, he left us with a debt. Yeah. Right, the debt they got to pay, and that's usually what happened. Families die and so forth and so on. And then what the people try to do is try to get the children to pay it off, right? right. That's the time to file bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, go on and read, brother. Verse 29. And if a man sell a dwelling house in a walled city, then he may redeem it within a whole year after it is sold. Within a full year may he redeem it. And if it be not redeemed within the space of a full year, then the house, then the house that is in the walled city shall be established forever to him that bought it throughout his generations. It shall not go out in the Jubilee. But the houses of the villages which have no wall round about them shall be counted as the fields of the country. They may be redeemed, and they shall go out in the Jubilee. Notwithstanding the cities of the Levites and the houses of the cities of their possession may the Levites redeem at any time. And if a man purchase of the Levites, then the house that was sold and the city of his possession shall go out in the year of Jubilee. For the houses of the cities of the Levites are their possessions among the children of Israel. But the field of the suburbs of their cities may not be sold, for it is their perpetual 
possession. Okay, so we know that all of these things are gonna, is going to take place when and begin the year of the Jubilee, which will begin uh, uh, the year of the Millennial Kingdom that's going to be set up on this earth. Now let's go and see some more things that's going to take place uh, uh, once the Messiah get this thing set up. Let's go to and the people bring Israel back up to the land. Isaiah chapter 2, and I want you to read verse 1 through verse 5, my brother. He says, chapter 2, and verse 1 through verse 5. Verse 1. The word that he says the son of Amos saw concerning Yehuda and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto you. Mm -hmm. And many people shall go and say, Come you, and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of the Elohim of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For all of Yehuda shall go forth the law, and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, calm you, and let us walk in the light of Yahweh. Chapter 14 and verse 1 through verse 8. That's not like a, um, a wall where government will build a theocracy, right? Of course. A righteous government is going to be set up on the earth. And this is what Yahweh is trying to, trying to uh, teach us uh, before, as a precursor before we get out of this country here, brother. That's what righteousness is all about. Yeah. Right, see, righteousness, you know, we look at righteousness uh, according to the way that we see it, but it ain't got nothing to do with the way we see it. What it got to do with righteousness has a lot to do with the need that's at hand right now. We have to see these things. Zechariah chapter 14 and verse Isaiah. 1 through verse 8. I'm sorry, Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1 through verse 8. For Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them, and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahweh for service and handmaids, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in the day that Yahweh shall give you rest from your sorrow and from your fear and from the hard bondage wherein you were made to serve, that you shall take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How have the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. Mm -hmm. Yahweh have broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted, and none hinders. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Hmm. Yes, the fir trees rejoice at you, and the cedars of Lebanon saying, Since you are laid down, no fella is come up against Since us. Since you've been put in that bottomless pit, Lucifer, ain't no fella come up against us. Micah chapter 4 and verse 1 through chapter 5 and verse 15. Micaiah chapter 4 and verse 1 through chapter 5 and verse 15. Elder Plus, we just read the end of Babylon, and we see that that future prophecy is called, called the King of Babylon, which is speaking about these two world systems. Of course. Right. Of course, my brother. Uh, of course. Micah chapter 4 and verse 1 through chapter uh, 5 and verse 15, my brother. Verse 1. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of Yahweh shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, 
and to the house of the Elohim of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Yehuda, and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among many people, and rebuke strong nations of all. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks, Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Mm -hmm. But they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid. For the mouth of Yahweh of hosts have spoken it. For all people will walk, every one, in the name of his God, and we will walk in the name of Yahweh our Elohim forever and ever. Yeah. And that day, says Yahweh, will I assemble her that hosts and, will I, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted, and I will make her that halted a remnant, and her that was cast far off a strong nation, and Yahweh shall reign over them in Mount Sion from henceforth even forever. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Yehudah, unto you shall it come, even the first dominion. The kingdom shall come to the daughter of Yehudah. Right, because Yehudah is his lawgiver, and Yehudah is his majestic white horse that uh, he's going to ride in the battle. Yehudah is, is his battle axe and weapons of war. Well, go ahead and read, brother. Verse 9. Now why do you cry out aloud? Is there no king in you? Is your counselor perish? Hmm. For pains have taken you as a woman in travail. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Yehudah. You see what he said? He said, be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Yehudah. Now, do, are we laboring to bring forth? Are we just hanging around, doing what we think we should do until everything is brought forth? Go ahead. And this is going to take. This is going to take a family effort on our part. I mean, there's a lot of people got to be saved, and we ain't got time to be doing no jiving with this thing. Go ahead and uh, 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 we we saw we see the the example of people who like to jive. We see we see what they're doing in the streets. They've been turned into a bunch of vain jangling, haven't they? Okay. Go ahead, brother. Yes, sir. Verse ten. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Yehuda, like a woman in travail. For now shall you go forth out of the city, and you shall dwell in the field. And you shall go even to America. There shall you be delivered. There Yahweh shall redeem you from the hand of your enemies. Now also many nations are gathered against you that say, Let her be defiled, and let our eye look upon Yehuda. Hmm. But they know not the thoughts of Yahweh, neither understand they his counsel. For he shall gather them as the sheaves into the floor. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Yehuda, for I will make your horn iron, and I will make your hoofs brass, and you shall beat in pieces many people, and I will consecrate their gain unto Yahweh and their substance unto the Adonai of the whole earth. Praise Yah. Now gather yourselves in troops, O daughter of troops. He have laid siege against them. Don't y'all know, don't y'all realize that we are being, that, that, that we are victims now, that the nations are laying siege against us, and what are we still doing? We still are trying to be okay. Go ahead, brother. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrata, though you be little among the thousands of Yehuda, yet out of you shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel who's gone forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Mm. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travailed have brought forth. Hmm. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. Therefore will he give them up until when? Until the time that she travail, which has travailed has brought forth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. Uh, 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 go ahead and pick that up in verse 7, brother. Yes, sir. And the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people as a dew from Yahweh, as the showers upon the grass that tarry not for men, nor wait for the sons of men. Well, what are we waiting for? Go ahead, brother. Verse 8. 
and the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Euro Gentiles in the midst of many people as a lion among the beasts of the forest, as a young lion among the flocks of sheep, who, if he go through, both treads down and tears in pieces, and none can deliver. Hmm. Your hands shall be lifted up upon your adversaries, and all your enemies shall be cut off. And it shall come to pass in that day, says Yahweh, that I will cut off your horses out of the midst of you, and I will destroy your chariots, and I will cut off the cities of your land, and throw down all your strongholds, and I will cut off witchcrafts out of your hand, and you shall have no more soothsales. Your graven images also will I cut off, and your standing images out of the midst of you, and you shall no more worship the work of your hands. And I will pluck up your groves out of the midst of you, so will I destroy your cities. And I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. Okay, my brother, now, verse, uh, uh, verse 10 through verse 15. You might want to take a good look at that, because those things are going to happen to us before we get out of this, uh, 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 before we get out of uh, this country here. Uh, uh, Zechariah 12 and verse 8 through chapter 14 and verse 21. We didn't read that, did we? Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 8 through chapter 14 and verse 21. Verse 8. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 8. And that day shall Yahweh defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as Dawid, and the house of Dawid shall be as Elohim, as the angel of Yahweh before them. Now this, this piece of scripture right here really goes up behind uh, Revelation chapter 19 and verse 19 through chapter 20 and verse 3. Okay, go ahead and read, brother. Verse 9. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. And I will pour upon the house of Dawid and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourner for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. In that day shall there be a great morning in Jerusalem, as the morning of Hadad Ramon in the valley of Megiddo. And the land shall mourn every family apart, the family of the house of Dawid apart, and their wives apart, the family of the house of Jonathan apart, and their wives apart, the family of the house of Levi apart, and their wives apart, the family of Shimei apart, and their wives apart, all the families that remain, every family apart, and their wives apart. In that day, there shall be a fountain open to the house of Dawid and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. Mm. And it shall come to pass in that day, says Yahweh of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered. And also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. Verse 6. And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in your hands? Then shall he answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friend. How are we going to wound it? What's our price? Go ahead, brother. Verse 7. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, says Yahweh of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, says Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried, they shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, Yahweh is my Elohim. Behold, the day okay, of Yahweh. My brother, I want you to skip over to uh, okay. uh, verse uh, 9. And Yahweh shall be king over all the earth. 
In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. All the land shall be turned as a plain from Jeba to Ramon south of Jerusalem. And it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate unto the corner gate and from the tower of Hananiel unto the king's wine presses. And men shall dwell in it and there shall be no more utter destruction but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. Praise Yah. And this shall be the plague wherewith Yahweh will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from Yahweh shall be among them, and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. And Yehuda also shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. And so shall be the plague of the horse, of the mule, of the camel, and of the ass, and of all the beasts that shall be in these tents as this plague. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, Yahweh of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, Yahweh of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, that shall be the plague wherewith Yahweh will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacle. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. Mm -hmm. And that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses, holiness unto Yahweh, and the pots in Yahweh's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Yehuda shall be holiness unto Yahweh of hosts, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and see therein. And in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of Yahweh. Praise Yah. Now, as we see Israel, the battle uh, of good against evil was really no contest at all, but a slaughter to rule, uh, to rid rather the world of Lucifer and his children who destroyed the earth, which is our inheritance. Then Yahshua, the glory of Yahweh's power, will enter into our holy city with shouts of praise coming from the house of Levi for the first time. In 6,000 years, the earth will be at peace with the creation, and the priest of the house of Israel will have its first king in 1,400 years. But then, let us hear the conclusion of this matter. Uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 1 through chapter 33 and verse uh, 26. And next year, I mean next week rather, y'all we permit, what we'll do is we'll come up and set up the theocracy of this, uh, of this kingdom and how things are going to be uh, ran if it's Yahweh's will. Uh, Yahoo chapter 30 and verse 1 through chapter 33 and verse 26. 30 and verse 1? Yeah, through chapter 33 and verse 26. Verse 1. The word that came to Yahweh from Yahweh, saying, Thus speaks Yahweh Elohim of Israel, saying, Write you all the words that I have spoken unto you in a book. For lo, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Yehuda, says Yahweh, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. And these are the words that Yahweh spake concerning Israel and concerning Yehuda. But thus says Yahweh, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask you now, and see whether a man does travail with child. Why do I see every man with his hands on his lords as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into pain? It's going to have to come. It's going to have to come, because Yahweh's got to knock us down for us to realize what he's doing. See, as long as we think we're doing all right, no, we don't do, we're not thinking serving Yahweh. 
And uh, you can't, we ain't going to be able to fake ourselves into this one here. What we're going to have to do, we're going to have, like we always said, when you tear your heart and stop tearing your garments, turn to me with your whole heart, with fasting and with weeping, and we ain't doing that. We ain't doing that. So when you tear your garments, you're really uh, glorifying Jacob. Of course, brother. That's all. That's your show in the flesh. That's what we're about, glorifying Jacob. Okay. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 7. Alas, but that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even a time of Jacob's trouble, when he shall be saved out of it. Mm -hmm. For it shall come to pass in that day, says Yahweh of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off your neck, and will burst your bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. Correct. Now see, now we know, from what we there now, the Jews cannot return to the land until the Messiah shows up. Right? And he told the people in Israel, said, as long as you're in your brother's land, you're going to have war from generation to generation, right? And ever since you heard of Israel, it's been war there, right? You know why? Here we are over here talking about we Africans. So why shouldn't somebody else take our, 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 our place? And then when we do find out uh, uh, the truth, look at what we do with it. We treat it like we want to. Like it's, uh, uh, come see, come saw. Right. Right. Do y'all be gonna bust y'all be gonna bust heads from one end of this uh, land to the other and go begin at our house? Watch. Just watch. Go ahead and read it, man. Yes, sir. Verse nine. But they shall serve Yahweh their Elohim and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. So we know that the Messiah is gonna be the God King High Priest, and David, we know he's gonna be set up as the prince of the kingdom, don't we? Go ahead, brother. Verse 10, therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, says Yahweh, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of thy captivity, and Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. Now, nah, we don't have to make no mistake about uh, uh, who Jacob is, because Jacob is in captivity, and we don't want to put people on earth that's in captivity. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 11. For I am with thee, says Yahweh, to save thee. Though I make a full end of all nations, whether I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee. But I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. Hmm. But thus says Yahweh, thy bruise is incurable, and our wound is great. Right, we worship the host of heaven simply because this is what the nations gave us. Go ahead, brother. Verse 13. There is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. All your lovers have forgotten you. They seek you not. For I have wounded you with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of your iniquity because your sins were increased. Why cry thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity. Because thy sins were increased, I have done these things unto you. Therefore all they that devour you shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. Now I ain't none of these folks telling y'all that now. See, go ahead brother. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that pray upon thee will I give for a prey. Hmm. Verse 17. For I will restore health unto you, and I will heal thee of your woes, says Yahweh, because they called you an outcast, said, This is Zion, whom no man seeks after. This is a miseducated, a lawless, and a self-willed people that nobody is seeking after them. This is why when people come over to this country, when I was a young man, brother, back in our, our Jim Crow time, uh, a lot of minorities came over and moved in our, uh, into our neighborhood. But since we went to that, to that civil rights movement and gave up the economic base in our neighborhood, who want to live among us now? We don't even like living among each other. Verse 7, where it says, This the day is great, and this the time of Jacob's trouble, 
even the media portrays us as such a low down people. Mm -hmm. Truly, the nation don't want to have anything to do with us. We can see that from this disaster that just happened. Of course, of course we can. But see, Jacob, don't we don't we don't look. I, I told y'all a few years ago uh, what was going down. See, niggas don't listen. Right. See, I told y'all a few years ago uh, in the spring. Y'all, we flooded all of the rivers on the west side of this country, right? And all the time, Arizona, California, Nevada, and those states, fires burning everywhere, right? Then in the wintertime, he flooded all the, all the rivers on this side of the country, right? But folks ain't looking. You know why? It didn't affect us personally. See, y'all better wake up and look and see what's going on. Our time is at hand. Y'all, we ain't driving. Let's teach it, Elf. Teach it. Now, go on and read, brother. Yes, sir. Yermiyahu, chapter 30, verse 18. Thus says Yahweh, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents, and have mercy on his dwelling places, and the city shall be built upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. And all of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. Their children also shall be as aforetime, and their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all that oppress them. He ain't punishing folks, he's suppressing them folks over there in Israel. They got bombs going off over. They're scared to go out of the house. Mm -hmm. Just had to move out of part of Israel, Gaza. Just to, just to say, because Miss Liberty and this beast want them to give the Palestinians a defined border in our land. Mm -hmm. And what are we doing? We sitting up here knowing these things and everything, and we go, you go, go about things just like ain't nothing going on. Right. Well, go ahead. What, what, what we want to do be accepted by the Gentiles and be part of the African race? Of course, brother. Two things, huh? Jake want to wax fat right here in this country. See, we think that everything is going to be real nice and smooth with us, even up until the time that we get up out of here. You've been deceived. Okay, go ahead and read, brother. It ain't just us. It's a whole multitude of our people that Yahweh's got to call. And we got to prepare for them. And we about to lose our place. Niggas go to the bank every, uh, every, every payday, but they showed on bank nothing in CCI. Uh, uh, go ahead and read, brother. Verse 21. And their nobles shall build themselves, and their governors shall proceed from the midst of them, and I will cause them to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engages hard to approach unto me, says Yahweh? Hmm. And you shall be my people, and I will be your Elohim. Behold, the whirlwind of Yahweh goes forth with fury, a continuing whirlwind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of Yahweh shall not return until he have done it and until he have performed the intents of his heart in the latter days you shall consider. And we truly are in the latter days, and that's what we're doing, considering. This is why Yahweh sent you a teacher that had his spirit that would give you these things. It ain't for me, it's for you. Uh, uh, go ahead and read, brother. Yemen Yahoo, chapter 31, verse 1. At the same time, says Yahweh, will I be the Elohim of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. <laughs> Thus says Yahweh, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. Yahweh have appeared of all unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love, therefore with love and kindness have I drawn thee. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin of Israel. You shall again be adorned with your tablets, and shall go forth in the dances of them that make merry. You shall yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria, the planter shall plant, and shall eat them as common things. But there shall be a day that the watchmen upon the Mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise you, and let us go up to Zion unto Yahweh our Elohim. But thus says Yahweh, Sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nations, Publish you, praise you, and say, O Yahweh, save your people, the remnant of Israel. 
Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth and with them the blind and the lame, the woman with child, and her that travails with child together, a great company shall return thither. They shall come with weeping and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of Yahweh, O you nations, and declare it in the isles of far off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd does his flock. For Yahweh have redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Praise Yah. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, and shall flow together to the goodness of Yahweh for wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and of the herd, and their soul shall be as a watered garden, and they shall not sorrow any more at all. What other hope do we have? What other hope do we have than what's offered to us in, uh, 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 through the covenants that was made with our Father? The Messiah came and sealed this covenant that we're reading right now. He came and sealed that in his blood blood. This is why he said, I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And poor folks talking about, he came to the world. No, he didn't. He came to Israel. Israel was sent to the world. Now the world teaching us about it, and we sit around foolish enough not to know what's going on. And, and those that us do know, act like we don't know. <laughs> Go on and read, brother. Verse 13. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old together. For I will turn their mourning into joy, and will comfort them, and make them rejoice from their sorrow. And I will saturate the soul of the priest with fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says Yahweh. Thus says Yahweh, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel weeping for her children, refused to be confident for her children, because they were not. Hmm. Thus says Yahweh, refrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work shall be rewarded, says Yahweh, and they shall come again from the land of the enemy. Praise Yah. And there is hope in your end, says Yahweh, that your children shall come again to their own border. Praise Yah. I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself thus, Thou hast chastised me, and I was chastised as a bullock unaccustomed to the yoke. Turn thou me, and I shall be turned, for you are Yahweh my Elohim. Mm -hmm. Surely after that I was turned, I repented, and after that I was instructed, I smote upon my thigh, I was ashamed, yea, even confounded, because I did bear the reproach of my youth. But only if you repent will you bear the uh, reproach of your use. Go ahead, uh, brother. Verse 20. Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? For since I spake against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Therefore my bowels are troubled for him, I will surely have mercy upon him, says Yahweh. Set you up way marks, make you high heaps, set your heart toward the highway, even the way which you went. Turn again, O virgin of Israel, turn again to these thy sins. Now we came, we know that we came over here on ships, right? Didn't the prophet Isaiah say that those long distance ships, ships of Tarshish, that the long distance ships is going to be first to come bringing his sons and his daughters? Okay, go ahead and read, brother. Verse 22. How long will you go about, O you backsliding daughter? For Yahweh have created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Don't we see it? Go ahead, brother. Verse 23. The problem is, can we handle it? Mm. Well, well, what I tell a lot of brothers, I said that, that happened in 75 with the Equal Rights Amendments. I said, y'all just catching up with it. We know, brother. We just got to handle it. And Jake don't want to handle it. So Jake got too much lying in him. <laughs> Go on and read, brother. Verse 23. Thus says Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of Israel. As yet, they shall use this speech in the land of Yehuda and in the cities thereof, when I shall bring again their captivity. Yahweh bless thee, O habitation of justice, and mountain of holiness. And thou shalt dwell in Yehuda itself, and in all the cities thereof together husbandmen, and they that go forth with flocks. 
For I have saturated the weary soul, and I have replenished every sorrowful soul. Upon this I await and beheld, and my sleep was sweet unto me. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Yehuda with the seed of man and with the seed of beast. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that like as I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down and to throw down and to destroy and to afflict, so will I watch over them to build and to plant, says Yahweh. Praise Yah. In those days they shall say no more, the fathers have eaten a sour grape, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eats the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. And to him that know to do good and do it not, it is sin to remain it. Go ahead, brother. Verse 31. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Yehudah. This is why Paul told you in Romans 15, chapter 8, he, uh, in verse 8, he said, I say that Yahshua HaMashiach was the minister to the circumcision to confirm the promises made with our fathers, and that the Gentiles may glorify Yahweh as it is written. They got to come to us. Now we're going through everybody else. Go ahead, brother. Verse 32. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke, although I was an husband unto them, says Yahweh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Well, is the, ask yourself a question. Is the righteousness of the law written in your heart, or is the letter of the law written in your heart? Mm. Then you know who you're dealing with, won't you? Uh, go ahead and read, brother. Verse 34. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Most High. For they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, says Yahweh. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. If we repent. Go ahead, brother. Verse 35. Thus says Yahweh, which gives the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divides the sea when the waves there are roar, Yahweh of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, says Yahweh, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Thus says Yahweh, if heaven above can be measured, and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, says Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that the city shall be built to Yahweh from the tower of Hananiel unto the gate of the corner. And the measuring line shall yet go forth over against it upon the hill Gareb, and shall come pass about to go off. And the whole valley of the dead bodies and of the ashes and all the fields until the brook of Kidron, until the corner of the horse gate toward the east, shall be holy unto Yahweh. It shall not be plucked up nor thrown down anymore forever. Chapter 32 and verse 36, my brother. Uh, and I want you to read up to uh, 33 and uh, uh, 26. Chapter 32, and pick that up at verse 36. And now, therefore, thus says Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel concerning this city, whereof you say, it shall be delivered into the hand of the king of Iraq by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries where I have driven them in my anger and in my fury and in great wrath, and I will bring them again unto this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely. And they shall be my people, and I will be their Elohim, and I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of their children after them, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them that, that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts that they may not, that they shall not depart from me. Hmm. Yea, I will rejoice over them to do them good, and I will plant them in this land assuredly with my whole heart and with my whole soul. 
But thou says Yahweh, like as I have brought all this great evil upon this people, so will I bring upon them all the good that I have promised them. And fields shall be bought in this land, whereof you say, it is desolate without man or beast, it is given into the hand of the Chaldean. Now this don't sound like happened to me, do it, y'all? Okay, go ahead, brother. Verse 44. Men shall buy fields for money and subscribe evidences and seal them and take witnesses in the land of Benjamin and in the places about Jerusalem and in the cities of Yehuda and in the cities of the mountains and in the cities of the valley and in the cities of the south for I will cause their captivity to return. And every man is going to return to his own inheritance. Now go ahead and read, brother. Yeah, but y'all. Uh, verse 6. Pick that up in verse 6. Yes, sir. Yahweh chapter 33, verse 6. Behold, I will bring it help and cure, and I will cure them, and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. And I will cause the captivity of Yehuda and the captivity of Israel to return, and will build them as at the first. And I will cleanse them from all their iniquity whereby they have sinned against me, and I will pardon all their iniquities whereby they have sinned and whereby they have transgressed against me. And it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise, and an honor before all the nations of the earth which shall hear all the good that I do unto them, and they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure unto it. Thus says Yahweh, Again, there shall be heard in this place, which you say shall be desolate without man and without beast, even in the cities of Yehuda and in the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate without man and without inhabitant and without beast, the voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, Praise Yahweh of hosts, for Yahweh is good, for his mercy endures forever. And of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of Yahweh, for I will cause to return the captivity of the land, as at the first, says Yahweh. Thus says Yahweh of hosts, again in this place, which is desolate without man and without beast, and in all the cities thereof, shall be a habitation of shepherds, causing their flocks to lie down. Mm -hmm. In the cities of the mountains, in the cities of the vale, and in the cities of the south, and in the land of Benjamin, and in the places about Jerusalem, and in the cities of Yehuda, shall the flocks pass again under the hands of him that counts them, says Yahweh. Mm. Behold, the day is come, says Yahweh, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised to the house of Israel and to the house of Yehuda. In those days and at that time will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto Dawid, mm -hmm. and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. Praise Yah. In those days shall Yehuda be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is the name wherewith she shall be called Yahweh our righteousness. For mm -hmm. thus says Yahweh, Thou we shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. Neither shall the priests, the Levites, want a man before me to offer burnt offerings and to come to meat offerings and to do sacrifice continually. And the word of Yahweh came unto Yahweh, saying, Thus says Yahweh, if you can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, and that there shall not be day and night in their season, then may also my covenant be broken with Dawid, my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne, and with the Levites, the priests, my ministers. As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of the sea measured, so will I multiply the seed of Dawid, my servant, and the Levites that minister unto me. Moreover, the word of Yahweh came to Yahweh, who said, do you not consider what this people have spoken, saying, The two families which Yahweh have chosen, he have even cast them off. Thus they have despised my people, that they should be no more nation before them. Thus says Yahweh, If my covenant be not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and David, my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be ruler over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For I will cause their captivity to return, 
and have mercy on them. Praise Yah. Yahweh Elohim, how excellent is your name and power in heaven and in earth. Even so, come Lord Yeshua and save us out of all our problems. Now run and tell that. Amen. Amen.